Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. Paradise. Paradise can mean many different things to many different people. Paradise to some is a quiet place for solitary reflection. For others, it's quite the opposite. For many, it's a Garden of Eden. Perhaps it's utopia. It can be the land of opportunity. Rich in natural history. Rich in human history. Many come to paradise to share the wonder. Many more come to learn of its wonders. Paradise can be a state of mind. For me, paradise is the state of Alabama. I'm Doug Phillips. Come along with me as we explore a paradise which truly is many things to many people. Come along as we discover Alabama's coastal paradise. This program is about a land unknown to many people, a land that in many ways has maintained its native natural wonders, a place of bountiful backcountry, forests, streams, and wildlife more diverse than can be found in much of the inhabited world. Come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of this land. Come along as we discover Alabama. Welcome to Discovering Alabama, and welcome to Alabama's coastal ecological paradise. We'll begin our journey here in the upper reaches of the Mobile Tensaw Delta, which may seem like a strange place to welcome you to Alabama's coastal paradise, but the whole story begins even further up that way. Say the word coastal, and the imagination often jumps to the beach. But many of the ecological wonders that create this paradise begin far to the north. Much of the story begins in the mountains. Here we discover the headwaters for one of the richest, most ecologically diverse river deltas in the world. Known collectively as the Mobile River Basin, these headwaters come together to form creeks, streams, and rivers all seeking to find the Gulf of Mexico. 
encompassing roughly 44,000 square miles, the basin is the fourth largest river system in North America. The basin drains parts of neighboring Mississippi, Tennessee, and Georgia, while the great majority of the basin is cradled by Alabama, and all of the basin's waters find their way to the coast through Alabama through the Mobile Tensaw Delta and into Mobile Bay. Wandering the wild wonders of the Mobile River Basin, especially here in the Delta, has always been a favorite expedition for discovering Alabama. One of our very first shows explored the mysteries of the Mobile Tensaw Delta. And over the years, we've discovered how many of the lower coastal plain rivers contribute to the uniqueness of Alabama's coastal paradise. The Weeks Bay watershed, for example, covers around 200 square miles and is fed by the Magnolia and the Fish Rivers. The Perdido, the Styx, the Blackwater, and Bon Secour Rivers all make significant contributions to Alabama's coastal ecological paradise. More and more world-leading scientists are saying what you and I have known all along. Alabama truly is special in its abundance and array of wonders. Alabama is extraordinarily fortunate to have such an amazing diversity of all kinds of plants and animals. Uh, the animals I study, amphibians like frogs and salamanders and li lizards, there's a huge variety of them that occur in Alabama, not only in the different habitats where you have different species, but even in one place, there are just so many different types. And it's, uh, it's important in many respects just to go out in nature and be able to see this diversity is extraordinary. Now, I live up in Massachusetts, we have almost no reptiles and amphibians. I could count the number on a couple of hands. And it's so much, when I come to visit Alabama, there's so much to see. It's just invigorating and exciting to see so much diversity. And so Alabama is really special in that way. Most of the biodiversity is in the southeastern United States, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina. Most of it's here plant richness, reptile richness, freshwater fish richness, fungi, trees, you name it, butterflies. Both in uh, the mountains and along the plains, but in its rivers, uh, as well as in the ocean, is really got a very high level of biodiversity. There is just an awful lot of stuff that you find there that you don't find elsewhere in the world, and it's abundant in places. You can drive an hour and be uh, in a, you know, a Gulf Coast environment or a mountain environment or a uh, lowland hills. It's not all over the country. You know, there are only a few corners that really get that. And those natural places are the touchstones where, they, where people from the science side get new discovery and from the public side often get that, uh, that sort of reinforcement of spirit. Alabama has a, a lot of diversity in the petroplants. There's probably five or six species that can be found there. You know, it's a very fascinating system. The fluid inside of the leaves is basically a, a small ecosystem. And so it's a very famous system for community ecologists who want to do things like look at succession or see if there are density dependent factors for the organisms that are living in these pitchers. go into a coastal environment and there are such really different types of organisms there than you encounter in the terrestrial world. I mean, you get into all these, I mean, 
you get into these sea-dwelling creatures. They don't have four legs and a tail and a head and teeth like we do, right? Or green like land plants. They have completely different body plans and different ways of going about living, and there is so much diversity. And that kind of diversity, I think, can be almost mind-boggling. So basically what you have is in Alabama, specifically, or even relative to the rest of the U.S. and the surrounding region, is an area that's super important for evolution and for diversification. So you have a really strong signal of uh, speciation and things like that in Alabama. And I mostly work on snakes, so Alabama is a great place for, for snakes. And you also have a really interesting um, sort of taxonomic composition, too, in Alabama. You get the stuff that comes down in from the mountains and then stuff from the west as well. And all these things are there because you have these really rich and different environments in Alabama, right? So you have these mixes and communities of species that, as communities, you don't find in other places. We have this amazing diversity of amphibians, and it's the most rich area for salamanders in the world. Um, and that's fantastic. We are in the suture zone in Alabama, where we have sister species, lineages that are most closely related to each other coming into contact in Alabama right here. It's just a riot of life up in the Delta right now, and, and incredibly beautiful. The Mobile Tensaw Delta is this huge, um, just hot spot of biodiversity. The diversity of our delta is nationally recognized. Sometimes it's a well-kept secret, but, but truly it's one of the most unique aspects of, of, of the nation, not just the state of Alabama. As the waters of the delta blend with the bay, there is yet more reason to sing the praises of our rich natural heritage. That's where you have uh, an enormous diversity of habitats. Uh, much of it is preserved and beautiful still. And I believe that as Alabama grows economically, as it will, in Mobile in particular, uh, then uh, we should put a lot more of our thinking and our resources into preserving that particular part of Alabama. these vast wetlands, and, and Mobile Bay is a really good example because the Mobile Tensaw system must drain two-thirds of the state of Alabama. And the, the value of these extensive wetlands are, first of all, that fertilizes the near shore areas and the seagrasses, and the seagrasses in turn serve as the nursery habitat for the larval and juvenile stages of lots of fish we like to eat. So there's an enormous value economically to having healthy rivers. And the, the part that's really astonishing, and this is maybe research for the last 20 or 30 years, is how extensively those systems are connected. One of the things that most people don't really understand very well is 43 billion gallons of water every single day enter Mobile Bay, cascading down from Tennessee, parts of Mississippi, parts of Georgia, through all the state of Alabama, all the municipalities, all the farmlands, and ending up in Mobile Bay. In many ways, Alabama is a world leader in biodiversity. And every fall, many hundreds, if not thousands, come to celebrate a special group, or shall I say flock, of creatures. So what is the name of this last one? For the color of the cheek, I would have called it the nondescript thrush. It's nice to have you here. I hope you're having a good time. We're not fancy. This crew's not fancy. They're here to study birds. But in that time, we've certainly got time to answer your questions if you have them, explain why we're here. So I don't want you to be reluctant to ask the questions. We may know a little bit more about the birds than you do, but it's probably precious little. We've been at this a half a century, so we ought to know something. But at any rate, there are no bad questions. The only bad questions are the ones that you don't ask. The Alabama Coastal Bird Fest started in 2003. It's what we're trying to do at Bird Fest. Birds can't vote. We can. 
we can sway people's mind and we can educate people as to why we need to save birds. We need to save birds because it saves habitat and it makes our life better on the coast. That'd be a good research project tonight when y'all are get out of the beer joints and well. get your hands. But you do have salt water and trees in the Birds have been migrating across the Gulf of Mexico or around the Gulf of Mexico for thousands of years. And so what we need to make certain is that we have provided enough habitat to provide enough food so they can have berries and insects to replenish their fat supplies before they go on to North Alabama and somewhere else in the United States and to Canada. We banded this hatching your birds as actually as nestlings, I think, and we've caught them at least eight years old, so they live at least eight years, maybe longer. I don't know how good that data is, is other than that that piece of data is accurate. Alabama's Coastal Bird Fest has folks flocking to Alabama's coastal paradise every fall and year round for that matter. Yeah, Birding is big business through our coastal region, and the economic impact makes it easier for some to acknowledge the value of ecosystems that provide habitat for these flying job creators. The economic and ecological contributions of some creatures, though, are a bit harder to recognize. We travel up to the Panhandle to see the Gulf Coast on a regular basis. I've worked on pocket gophers there. I've worked on beach mice in uh, both Florida and Alabama, and some of the most beautiful beaches you'll ever see. But it's also some habitat that's, that's potentially really threatened by development and other things as well, especially for beach mice, for example. My favorite story about, you know, <laughs> balancing your environmental conscience with your other desires is when they built that condo down close to, uh, just close to the Gulf on, on the pass, they had found that there were beach mice there. So the developer of the condo went to the animal shelter and got some cats and took them and set them out in the beach mouse area. Well, you got rid of the beach mice, but now you got feral cats. And you really didn't see that the beach mouse was sort of a barometer for judging the health of the beach and everything else. It just, and then all of a sudden they were nearly gone. Bringing in feral cats to destroy a beach mouse may sound like a joke, but it's no laughing matter. The little beach mouse makes a contribution to Alabama's coastal ecological paradise for all of us. So these beach mice are found right on the primary dunes where you commonly see sea oats, and they're a disperser of those sea oat seeds. And so you'll see them uh, caching those seeds and, and, and distributing them along, uh, along the dunes. And of course, those sea oats are what hold those primary dunes together. And that's what keeps the hurricanes at bay for the people who live inland, or at least that's what we hope. Sea oats, sand dunes, and coastal wetlands have for millennia weathered the tides and buffered the inlands from powerful forces of nature. It is a delicate balance of nature that keeps these ecosystems intact. There are some forces of nature, however, that may be a bit harder to withstand. Love it to death. That's a phrase we sometimes hear when describing the human tendency to overrun paradise. Fortunately, the people of Alabama decided to set aside some special places for now and forever. We administer the Forever Wild Land Trust program for the state. The land that we become aware of to even get to the step of looking at and evaluating actually comes from the public. Once we confirm that we have a, a willing seller, we evaluate property based on the four purposes of the Forever Wild Land Trust program, and that's habitat protection, um, wildlife management areas, either new ones or additional acreage to existing ones, uh, state parks, and also just generally providing recreation for the public. You know, Alabama uh, deserves a, uh, a very bright reputation, forever wild. It speaks wonders for Alabama, and here is a state uh, which has been one of the most enlightened in the eastern United States.
the wonders of Alabama. They're easy to find throughout the wonder that is Alabama's coastal paradise. To name but a few, Perdido Pass, Gulf State Park, Fort Morgan, Bon Secure National Wildlife Refuge, Weeks Bay Reserve, Five Rivers Delta Resource Center, the Bartram Canoe Trail, Splinter Hill Bog, Dolphin Island, and Dolphin Island Sea Lab, Grand Bay National Wildlife Refuge. And this doesn't begin to count the wealth of local piers and parks and paths and beaches and forests and places to play or to relax, to contemplate. Here in the forever wild lands of the Mobile Tensaw Delta, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that just a ways over the horizon is one of the state's largest cities. And up the rivers that feed this rich delta, the majority of our state's cities and towns, the majority of our state's population, it is a fitting metaphor that many creeks, streams, and rivers come together in the bay and ultimately the gulf. As waters to the sea nurture great diversity throughout Alabama's coastal region, so too do they bring a variety of opportunity for each of us to discover our own special paradise. Some come for the hoopla. Some come for the recreation. Some for the relaxation. Some for the occupation. All of the oyster shells that they used for the education. All come because this is a special place for creatures big and small. Beach to bay to delta, south to north, west to east, you could be looking for Eden, Shangri-La, Nirvana, Utopia, or Seventh Heaven for that matter. Chances are you'll find it along Alabama's coastal paradise.
Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the University of Alabama. This program is supported by grants from the Solon and Martha Dixon Foundation. The Alabama Wildlife Federation, working for wildlife since 1935. And the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division.